Today we are doing some really easy, fun, and creative fall DIYs. My name is Courtney, welcome to my channel. Let's get crafting. For this DIY, I have a vase that looks like a book, but the problem with it is it has some wording on there. So what I thought would be an easy process of removing that text transpired into a huge fiasco. So you guys know I like to keep it real here. I'm gonna show you a little bit of what was going down and then we're gonna move on to plan B for this project. This is not coming off. This is ridiculous. Why is this happening? Why is it happening? Because it's Monday. That's why. Oh, it smells so bad. Okay, we're just gonna let this sit. It'll probably eat the vase, but that's what we're gonna do. Because now I'm gonna scratch it. Oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. This was gonna be such a cute project. Nail polish remover. Why did it work on the side and not here? That is one of the dumbest things I think I've ever seen. This is just not going well. Now I know what Cinderella feels like. In my head, this is gonna work. We are working with water beads. So here they are. Um, I will have these linked down below in the description box along with everything else in today's video. But essentially the concept of these is they're super tiny. You drop them in a container, you put water in there and it hydrates the beads and then you can do some really cool DIYs with it. So my problem here is I started off just using some of the beads, putting water in there. And then I off camera just decided to add all the beads to this tiny container. Well, the problem is they keep swelling and it was overflowing. And that's how I have this ginormous bucket of them that you saw at the beginning of this video. So lesson learned here, only pour a few beads into your container and add the water, let them swell. You don't need as many beads as you think you might. So once I got all of the beads, hydrated i was ready to start making a really cool floral arrangement and this is what it looks like once they're kind of plumped up now another little tip thing here that i learned i filled mine all the way up to the top leave about an inch to an inch and a half of space at the top of your vase or container now i've got these little fillers that we'll be using i got them from hobby lobby and but dollar tree does have some of those um plastic little clear pumpkin decor pieces and then this floral arrangement also came from Hobby Lobby. So the first step you're going to want to do is start adding your water to your container. So I did that. I added my water and there were a lot of air bubbles in mine but you can get rid of those very easily just by I just used a bamboo skewer and I just stuck it in there and I just kept moving it around until all those air bubbles went up to the top of the vase. So as you can see here, because I put too many water beads in there, I didn't leave a space at the top. I'm having to pull these out and y'all, they go everywhere. They're slimy little boogers and they just fly. <laughs> it was a hot mess. But the cool thing about it is, is once you have the right amount in there, it starts to go clear. You can see right here after I started popping those bubbles that the vase goes clear and you can't even tell that there are these little water gel balls inside of the vase. And here comes the fun part. Now you start to add your embellishments. So I'm taking just the orange clear pumpkins, again, using that wood skewer to push them down. And it's very easy to kind of position them where you want them to go. And it looks like they're just kind of floating, just suspending in the middle of your vase. So cool. I added the flowers just by sticking them in, the, in there. And then this is how this arrangement turned out. I do love how it turned out, but then I got a little smarter for the second one. For the second one, I found a way that's a little bit easier. I wanted to make more of a kind of glam floral centerpiece. This would be great for entertaining or as a hostess gift. So I have a mason jar that had, it was halfway full of water and now I'm just adding the water beads to that. And then when I get to the top, 
Again, I did put a few too many in at the top, so I didn't need to take a couple of them out, but this worked much better. I added a little bit more water and it was so much easier to do it this way versus putting the beads in and then trying to add the water because they continue to pop up. Using the gold pumpkins from that set, same process, just using my bamboo skewer, sticking the flower straight in there. To finish it off, I wanted to add a little bit of a sparkle, so I have this ribbon that I just did around the rim of the mason jar, attached it with some hot glue, and then tied a bow, attached that, and I love how this one turned out. You want to grab some books for this next DIY. We are not going to destroy these books. Do not worry, but this is something that you definitely could make for every season and you want to grab your favorite seasonal fabric. So this fabric came from Hobby Lobby and what we're going to do are we're going to wrap both of these books with the fabric. Now, you want to go old school when you're wrapping this, just like I, I mean, back in the day, <laughs> I say back in the day when we would get a textbook for every class and they would give us those paper, those big sheets, and we had to like, you know, wrap all our books and keep them protected. That's essentially what you're doing here. So when you put the fabric on the book, you just want to make sure that when you do go in to start, uh, start to secure it, that you do kind of pull the fabric tight because if you don't, it will get loose, it will get wrinkly, and it probably will fall off. So all I did to get these wrapped is I folded the fabric in half, kind of wrapped it around the um, book, and on the place where the binding is, I just took my scissors and just trimmed a little rectangular piece of the fabric off so that way um, I didn't have to worry about a piece of fabric trying to tuck it somewhere or tuck it underneath itself or what have you. And then I just used hot glue to fold this and hot glue it directly onto the fabric. Again, don't do it to the book, just do it to the fabric. And you want to do one side, flip it over, just kind of fold it in like you're, I don't know, <clears throat> wrapping a present, I guess. Use some hot glue, fold it, secure it, and then the books are nice and wrapped. To finish off the book stack, I grabbed some of this ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby and I, just to save some of the ribbon, I hot glued it to the bottom book, put the top book on and then again pulled the ribbon over it and then hot glued it to the bottom. You could do a crisscross here if you wanted to. I just wanted one piece of ribbon across it. And then I also have this little pumpkin pick. I pulled the little pumpkins off of the pick and then tied a bow with that same ribbon. Use a little hot glue to get my bow attached and then for the three pumpkins, I arranged them using some hot glue and just gluing them directly to the fabric on the top of the book. And then this book stack was ready to be displayed. Time for another one of my miniature crafts. I grabbed this pack of mini pumpkins because I like to stick on them better, but if you don't have these, grab the wooden apples from Dollar Tree. I pulled out six of these pumpkins, AKA apples, and three shades of red and three shades of green. I started by painting my three apples red. Here are the colors of those red apples. Screenshot it now. And then I painted my three green pumpkins and again, get ready to screenshot. Here are the three colors of green that I used for those apples. For the caramel, I am going the easier route here, which is to use glossy Mod Podge and some of this classic colored apple barrel paint. I'm just mixing the paint in with the um, Mod Podge and dipping my apples in there. If you want it to be a little more three dimensional, this is gonna go on very flat on the apple. Then you can do these steps. You can use some clear hot glue, get that on your apple, paint it with the classic colored paint, and then top it with the coat of the Mod Podge. It is a few more steps, but it definitely, I think, kind of makes it a little more authentic because it just has a more dimension to it. It. Once I got the apples covered, some of them I did dip in the corn cob bedding, but it was a little large, so I would recommend breaking that down. I wish I'd done that, but I was like, eh, it can't be that bad, but 
It was a little large. Then this comes the fun part. I had this little mini tear tray. It came from Hobby Lobby. They seem to have them every single year. And I decided to decorate this up and make it kind of a fall meets Halloween decor piece. And I absolutely love how this little thing turned out. This is a great size for a desk or just to, I don't know, gift to somebody. It's just super cute. grab three packs of mushrooms from the Dollar Tree and a strand of fairy lights. The fairy lights I have came in a huge pack from Amazon for super cheap. So that is what I'm using, but Dollar Tree does have them as well. You will also need some little tiny eye hooks. I kind of wish I had had a silver strand of fairy lights because my eye, ho eye hooks were silver, but they're not super noticeable. So what I did is I started by taking the eye hooks and poking them into the mushrooms. Now they felt pretty secure, but I had a feeling that they probably would pop off. So I did try stringing up a mushroom onto the fairy lights to see how stable it was. And sure enough, it popped out. So I ended up taking my glue gun, just squirting a little bit of hot glue at the top of the mushroom where those little holes were that I made, stuck the eye hook in there, and that was perfect. Then to string these up, I figured out the configuration for at least this particular strand of fairy lights. And I will link these down below if you feel like you might be using a ton of fairy lights in the next couple of months for DIYs is two lights and then a mushroom in between lights and then two lights and then a mushroom in between. So that's how I um, fed them onto the fairy lights. Once those were on there, I secured them on there just by twisting the uh, strand of fairy lights around the eye hook a couple of times. And then I took some burlap ribbon that I had, I cut it in half to make it thinner strips. And then I also had some of this Dollar Tree lacy kind of burlap ribbon. Originally the plan was to put two pieces of this together and tie it between each of the mushrooms, but I ran out of the lacy one. So I kind of had to reconfigure. So what I ended up doing was a piece of brown burlap with the lace and burlap ribbon, and then just a plain piece of brown burlap. And those went in between the mushrooms. Once those were tied on, that's it. I kept it pretty simple here. You definitely could add some pumpkins if you wanted to, a lot of different options, but I just like the kind of the a different approach to a fall garland with these mushrooms. We'll need some type of picture for this DIY. I'm using this one that I got on clearance from Hobby Lobby and I started by taping off the frame so that the inside of it, I could paint it with some ivory colored paint. Once it was painted, I set it aside to let it dry and I grabbed a cardboard box. This happens to be the box that Jennifer sent me from the mystery box. So I'm still using this puppy and I cut a piece of the cardboard and then I kind of placed it inside of the frame because that was just to help me size the pieces that I needed to make. So once I put it in there and realized, okay, this is going to work, the pieces will be fine. I took a pencil and drew four petals on the cardboard and cut them out. I also needed a circle. So I just grabbed a paint bottle, traced around that, cut that out. And then using one of the other petals that have been cut, I traced around that and cut four more petals. So I ended up with eight petals and one circle piece. I grabbed some of this dark yellow fabric and for the circle, I put on a little bit of Mod Podge. I just spread it around with my finger, took the fabric, stuck it on there, and then just used my scissors to trim around it. I wasn't trying to wrap the whole piece of cardboard because it's actually the sides of it are not going to be noticeable. And then I did the same process for the petals. Now, I personally would probably recommend using at least three different types of fabric, maybe even four. I only use two types and the finished product, while I do like the idea of it and it does give off like sunflower vibes, I feel like I should have worked an orange in there just to make it a little more on the fall train type <laughs> vibe. But I mean, it's totally up to you or you could just do one color fabric. It doesn't really matter. Once all of these pieces of cardboard were covered, I just took some hot glue and I hot glued them directly down to my frame and that's it. I had thought about adding like buttons and some ribbons and then I was gonna add some polka dots to the back, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna step away and I, like I 
said, I feel like it gives off sunflower vibes, but for me personally, I could have probably made it a little more fallish if I'd worked some orange, maybe some green, some browns in there, but I really do love how it turned out. And that's another round of fall DIYs in the books. Let me know down below. As always, please let me know which one of these was your favorite projects. Also, let me know, have you ever worked with the water beads? And if you haven't, do you think you want to? I would love to know your honest opinion if you think it's cool or if you think, eh, it sounds a little troublesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos that you might wanna check out and I will see you in the next one. Bye.